Say, do you like ChatGPT but you wish you could have it for free on your own computer? Well, now you can. Introducing GPT for All, a free large language model chatbot trained on more than 400,000 prompt generation from GPT 3.5. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install it on your own computer. Hello humans, my name is Kayo A. Overload, and yes, you heard it right, GPT for All is a chatbot, exactly like ChatGPT, that you can use on your own computer for absolutely free. Now, GPT for All is actually a chatbot that was fine-tuned from the Llama 7B model, which is the leaked large language model from Facebook. And the way they actually fine-tuned this model is actually very interesting. All they did is actually connect 1 million prompt response pairs using the GPT 3.5 Turbo OpenAI API, and after cleaning and removing low-quality data, the final dataset contained more than 400,000 prompt generation pairs. And for the entire training, they did that in 4 days, and it only cost them $800 in GPU cost and $500 for the OpenAI API which is actually very cheap. Now what's really great with GPT for All is that this is by far one of the easiest models to download and install on your own computer. And you can actually install it on any OS that you want, on Mac, Linux and Windows. Now the only downside is that as of right now it doesn't really have a UI, so everything is done inside the command prompt window. But since this project is fairly new, this is something that might come in later. And also what's really cool is that you also don't need to have a very powerful computer to be able to run this. Because everything actually runs on your CPU. You don't even need a powerful GPU to be able to run this. And that's really really cool. Okay, so that being said, let's actually start the installation. Okay, so before we start the installation, make sure that you have Git installed on your own computer, if you haven't done it already. Otherwise, the git clone command will not work, because what you're gonna do now is you're gonna create a brand new folder on your computer. So right click, new folder, and I'm gonna call mine GPT for all. And then inside that folder, I'm gonna click on the folder URL, type cmd, press enter. And then in the command prompt window, you're gonna copy and paste this command that you will find in the description down below. And then you're gonna press enter. And what this command will do is that it will actually clone the repository onto your computer, as you can see right here. Now the next step is to actually download the GPT for all model that you can find right here. So just click on this link and this will start downloading the model onto your computer. Now this is a 4GB model so it might take some time for you, but in my case since I've already done it, I don't have to do it again. Now if for some reason you have trouble downloading it from this link, if you go down, you will see here a torrent link that you can use inside your torrent client. So then once you've downloaded the 4GB model, you're gonna select it, Ctrl X to cut it, you're gonna go inside your GPT for all folder, into chat, and then you're gonna paste the model right here. And now, well, we are done. Because now on Windows, all you have to do is just double click on the .exe file. And there you go. Simple as that. And now if I use some of the examples provided on the GitHub page, and I paste them in the command prompt, and press enter, GPT for all is giving me exactly what I asked for. And for a large language model that is running on my local computer, it is actually pretty fast. So how does it compare to the actual chat GPT? Is it better? Is it worse? Well, let's be honest here, since this was fine-tuned on only 400,000 prompts, it will of course be worse. But just the fact that you have a large language model running on your local computer for absolutely free is just insane. And we are just at the beginning of all of this. So now let's actually try some examples and see how it compares to chat GPT. So for example, if I ask, write me a short story about a penguin going on the vacation in Australia and making friends with the locals, if I press enter, and I got something like this, which I'm not gonna read everything because it's very long, but it is actually a pretty good story about a penguin called Quentin that indeed went on vacation in Australia and made friends with the locals. I mean, that's exactly what I asked for. And now if I write the exact same thing in ChatGPT, I actually got a very similar sounding story about a penguin called Penny that went on vacation in Australia and made friends along the way. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one is really the best one. There are very similar stories written in a very similar way. Now one thing that I would like to know is if GPT for all has memory just like ChatGPT. Because for example, if I ask here, what is the name of the penguin? ChatGPT answers me that the name of the penguin is Penny. And now if I ask the same question in GPT for all, if it has memory, it should say that the name of the penguin is Quentin. So if I press enter, and indeed we got a good answer. The penguin is named Quentin. So yes, GPT for all does have memory. So it's not a simple chatbot that doesn't remember the previous conversation. So that definitely opens way more possibilities. So now let's see if GPT for all can actually code a very simple web page. Because for example, in chat GPT, write me the code for a web page where there is a button that when pressed, changes the color of the background page to a random color. And if I press enter, 
ChatGPT will write me a very simple code that I can use from my HTML page. So for example, if I copy the code and if I create a new text document, then paste the code inside, click on file, save as, save it as an HTML page, click on save. And now if I run this, I have now an empty web page with a change color background button that when I click on it, changes the background of the web page to a random color. Exactly what I asked for. So now if I write the exact same instruction, it's a GPT for all and I press enter, I get some very weird Python code for some reason. So maybe if I give a little bit more precision, so if I give more precision and write something like write this code in HTML, CSS and JavaScript that I can copy and paste easily. And I get some very generic advice on how to use HTML, CSS and JavaScript for something completely different. So maybe if I give more precision in the same sentence, GPT for all will understand it better. Okay, so now indeed it has started writing in HTML, CSS and JavaScript code, but unfortunately it seems like it has run out of token and it did not finish the code. So maybe if I write something like continue, it is telling me that the command is not recognized by Python and then it says some things that are absolutely nothing to do with my code. So it's a little disappointing but unfortunately I think that GPT for all is not really the best coder. So yeah, as you can see as of right now GPT for all is very limited compared to something like ChatGPT. Now you can still do a lot of cool things, especially when it comes to writing or brainstorming. So for example, if I ask something like, give me startup business ideas, and this is what I get. Here are some potential startup businesses you could consider starting up. And this is some startup business ideas that I get. Online marketplace for secondhand goods, personalized nutrition service, and some apps to help people organize their lives. So yeah, there you go, not bad. However, keep also in mind that since GPT for all was trained on chat GPT prompts, sometimes it might refuse answering a very simple question. Like for example, if I write, give me some name ideas for my new business selling fish, for some reason it refuses to answer the request. So yeah, sometimes GPT for all is very weird, where it completely refuses to answer a very simple question, like giving me simple name ideas for my new business selling fish, and it will of course refuses to answer an illegal question, but also, sometimes, by running the exe file again, and using that exact same question in a new window, I get an illegal advice without any problems. So yeah, that's really weird. But yeah, there you go. As you saw, GPT for all is a pretty cool tool that is still in its infancy. It will definitely become better over time, unless another open source model takes its place very soon. But again, for now, this is what we have. It's free, easy to install, and you can use it on your local computer. And the Llama model on which this GPT for all is based was leaked only one month ago. And we already see a bunch of new chatbots fine-tuned by the community that are better and better every single week. So just imagine what we will have in a few months. I mean, this is stable diffusion all over again. So yeah, we live in very exciting times. So again, what a time to be alive. And there we have it, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the ones who support me so I can make these videos for you. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.